This thing right here, that's the new torch height controller. And it may look exactly the same as the other one did, if you recall. But this one has step and direction inputs and outputs, as you've seen right here. So this thing right here directly sends the signals to the Z axis up and down to tell it whether to go up or down based on the voltage that it's getting from the plasma cutter. And with the other one, we had to rely on the plasma cutter to tell the controller to tell it to go up or down. It was just, it was a little bit different. This is much easier though. So now we're just gonna hook it up and see what she'll do. And she's on. I still have everything hooked up with the Z axis. All the wiring and stuff go through the torch height controller and into the driver for the stepper motor. So Z axis still works. So what I did here and here was determine what kind of voltage does the torch height controller need to be looking for. So I hooked up the multimeter and ran a couple test runs just by hand on here just to see what kind of voltage we would get from the multimeter to see what I need to set the torch height controller at. So we gotta switch the polarity on this thing. It said it was going up when it was actually going down. So you can change the polarity with the direction here. So what we have here is a very small bracket. This is almost maybe seven inches wide from here to here. And there's bends right here. So I'm gonna cut this out just like this. I'll show you later in Fusion 360 how I made this the flat pattern for it and everything. But I'm curious to know how, like in a sheet metal or fabrication shop, how do, how do you go about cutting things out like this that are to be bent? Because since this is bent, it's not like a straight up and down L. It has a curve to it, so that means the main dimension, this dimension right here, has to be a little bit smaller because that bend doesn't take up as much as, as if it were to be like a straight up and down cut. So we'll cut this out and see what we can come up with. I apologize, the plasma cutters are in it, so it's kind of loud. But let me tell you what I got so far. I had the torch height controller set way too high of a voltage, so it was trying to go down really far. So when it would go to the next move, it would just it would be already in this hole because it wanted, it thought it needed to go further down to get to that voltage. So I lowered the voltage that the torch height controller references, and now we're going to see what we can come up with. That's what she looks like. So we got this thing all set up and ready to go to bend it up. And before I do that, I want to show you how I came up with this in Fusion 360. This is the model here. And this is the sheet metal feature of Fusion 360, so you can make a flat pattern of this. So these are the critical dimensions here. 1.462 and 4.055. So those are the, the main dimensions we're looking for here. But see, the bend here, like I was talking about before, takes up less than if it were to come clear over here and straight up. So this is just a little bit less material here. So that's sort of what we have to take into account. So to get those dimensions there, we look at this flat pattern here. This is basically what we're going to cut out here. And this is the bend line. So we would put the middle of the press brake right on that line and bend it down. And we should get exactly what our dimensions are. Well, maybe close. So if you'll remember, the critical dimension was from this face to the top of this face. And that was 1.462. We got 1.455. Seven thousandths under. I don't think that's too bad. What do you guys think? Now let's get the other side bent. So really, 
really, this thing right here didn't turn out too bad for my first time doing any type of like plasma cutting with sheet metal bending, so it really worked out better than I thought maybe. And we got the torch height controller going for the plasma machine, which is really cool because I've been wanting to get that thing going for a long time now. Plus, another thing that needs to be added to that plasma machine, and that is an ohmic sensor. What that ohmic sensor does is it utilizes the z-axis so when the torch comes down, it touches off the metal, then retracts just a little bit, then starts the cut. And that's super useful, say, when the torch is going from one end of the sheet to the other and it's very warped, then it could catch the metal and we don't want that. Lil, what are you doing? Plus, I wanted to ask you guys what you think about this situation. So those holes right there, I mean, they're still pretty good circles, but some are like where the torch has gone. Like, it, it, I don't know if you can see that middle one right there. That guy right there. It like, it's like the torch missed it. Are these holes something guys would normally do like after you get done plasma cutting? Or is this something that you incorporate with the plasma cutting itself? That's another good question with the sheet metal type fabrication stuff. So let me know what you guys think about that stuff. And I think that's it for now. So thanks for watching.